Cellular respiration, glucose, energy stored by photosynthesis plus oxygen, what we breathe to assist the Krebs cycle equals carbon dioxide, a byproduct of the Krebs cycle, plus water, hydrogen, and oxygen bonded together. And most importantly, ATP is a usable form of energy. Here we go. Now, it begins in glycolysis, a very simple process that goes down in the cytoplasm in your body in a recess. Glucose breaks down with the help of ATP, which then produces two more ATP for you and me. Two and AD plus gather their electrons. Two and ADH are the result. After all is said and done, two peruvic acid remain in internal bodies energized to exult. These two peruvic acid move down to the Krebs cycle where they will slowly be broken apart. CO2 is ejected from the system in our bodies, which allows for the Krebs cycle to start. Now here's where things get intense. Coenzyme A joins two carbon molecules in order to form acetyl COA, which then joins four carbon molecules. Citric acid is created and CO2 is lost, yet another NAD plus is filled. Though at the expense of another CO2, the five carbon molecule becomes a four, though converting NAD plus and ADP. Despite the loss of carbon, more NADH is made along with the conversion of FAD to FADH2. The Krebs cycle keeps on spinning and spinning as the chain goes on to the next station in our respiratory wrap, the ETC. All the accumulated NADH and FADH2 expel their high energy electrons to the ETC. The electrons energy in the transport chain helps to move hydrogen across the thylakoid and assist in the change of polarity. The hydrogen now moving, and with a jump start, are pulled towards the ATP synthase. After entering this very important piece, they jump around in order to create ATP. As the main motive of cellular respiration, a new goal has been complete. After only two ATP were spent, in total 36 were made, it can't be beat. But, cellular respiration was merely one of two pathways and is considered aerobic. This means oxygen must be present, which is a liability compared to anaerobic. With oxygen present in aerobic respiration, many more ATP can be made. But anaerobic respiration or respiration without oxygen can also be of aid. Fermentation is the pathway that can be followed when oxygen is lacking. This includes alcoholic fermentation and the other fermentation with citric acid. Both require a steady and strong supply of peruvic acid and NADH. The lactic acid is done in the muscle cytoplasm. Alcoholic is done in plants. Alcoholic fermentation is used by microbes in order to free up NAD+. After too many electrons are being carried, the ETC must wait. There's not enough. Fermentation allows for NADH to release its high-energy electrons. Though it produces NAD+, to be replenished, it also creates things wanted gone. In alcoholic fermentation, ethyl alcohol and CO2 are the culprits, though in lactic acid fermentation things end differently with it. Lactic acid is created along with NAD+, that of course re-enters glycolysis, though the lactic acid is a byproduct of our muscles when we need more energy, and therefore it sits. As a source of energy in the form of ATP, this process can easily be tracked. By using a system of measurement called calorie, scientific equations can be backed. A calorie is the amount of energy to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree. A calorie, with a capital C this time, is exactly 1,000 of these. And with the sense the process through which we gain our energy, cellular and anaerobic aspiration are fascinating, or should I say, at least to me.